Shouldn't we be rehearsing? People! When will he be here? Any minute, very soon. Honey. Well, I've got several points I'd like to touch on, and he'll be here any minute, and no one's listening to me. Oh, we should never have asked him to the second rehearsal. I'll bet he doesn't even shout. Look, he wants it to be a short and quiet visit, and he doesn't want it spread around that he's back on the island, Marjorie. I don't know what you mean. Oh, come on, Mother. Welcome, Mr. Wood, to the second rehearsal of an original musical written by myself, S. Dave Schoenfeld. People, having a star come and visit is all well and good, but the fact remains that the Harbor Rodden's players are headed down the road to financial ruin. If we expect to continue, we're going to have to have more people in the audience than we have on stage. I'm just asking, shouldn't we be going over our lines? I got it. Hello. Hey, what's taking so long? Oh, no, you got to come. Everybody's waiting. We've got everything all planned. We got dip. You got to come. Okay, he's coming. He's leaving our place this minute. He's coming straight over. Where's my script? He said he'd be glad to see his rehearse, so he guess we better, you know, practice rehearsing. Someone has stolen my scripts. Oh. Imagine Lewis Wood back home. He's Lawrence Wood now, Marjorie. Don't go calling him Lewis. Don't you lecture me about what to call him. Lewis and I have always had an understanding that went beyond words. words. I will bring it up to a king of beauty. They will never love you emotionally. People. Oh, why doesn't anyone ever listen to me? So many nights, but I guess it's worth it. Oh, what will I say when we're face to face? Been on Broadway, I need advice. I need to be like you and leave this place. Aren't you going to warm up your voice? What end? How's that dancing? Yeah, I just mean, I just wanted to say again how delighted I was when you guys told me that you actually wanted to perform my play. I regret our bodies ourselves last night, and I still say it'd make a hell of a musical. Week, once, once a week, and tonight it's worth it. Winter was bleak, but tonight you'll see. He's gonna love us. Say that we're great. We're never great. We've got to be. Where's Julia? How should I know where she is? Am I her legal guardian? My baby, if you'd only cultivated some inner discipline, it might have been your little piece we were rehearsing tonight rather than me. Marjorie! We are not rehearsing my little piece tonight, Mother, because nobody in this entire group has enough imagination to appreciate. I did. I know. You are misunderstood us. But the gentleman you're about to meet is a real artist. How would you know? You haven't seen him in over 20 years. So many nights. And tonight it's worth it. Sure, we had fight, but tonight we're friends. Friends to his vows, no matter how it keeps me. And I'm just asking, does everybody know his or her line? Look, he said he didn't want to see anything out of the ordinary. Well, he came to the right place. <laughs> Here I go again, me and hero worship. It's ridiculous. Listen, he's an actor, not a god. Couple lucky breaks doesn't make a genius. So I shake his hand. Is that gonna change my life? My whole life. My whole life. Here I go again, dying for approval. And I'll wanna die if he doesn't listen to my song. But I know he will, boy. Will they be speechless? When he says, Homer, I'm impressed. You're the best. May I suggest a way to change your life? Your poor life. Your boring life. Oh, it's boring. Can I see his real hands? Gun. If I owned a staple gun, I'd shoot myself. Nobody's studying their script. Why can't everyone hey, just hold on? So many nights, and tonight it's worth it. Never before has it been so clear. Here so happy, someone shows you why you're. You'll be standing right beside us. Him. Has he been run over? Why do I think the worst? I never felt so unrehearsed my whole life, my whole life, my whole life. Are you ready? Are you joking? Do you see him? I mean, the crack so nervous, I can barely. He's coming any minute. So many nights, 
Welcome, Mr. Wood. Goodness. Marjorie, hi. Everyone, this is my big brother. And my big brother-in-law. Honey, who seemed fit to visit all the way from New York City. Which isn't that far away. Honey, I'd like you to meet our little group here, the Harbor Island Players. Dave so-and-so, Dave teaches music over at the high school. And this would be Hope Getty. You do remember the guests. Hello. I knew your dad. He used to do his yard work sometimes for pocket money. Fine man. I know. And you're all grown up. Married. I'm against marriage. What do you do for a living? Yard work. Hope did our rock garden. And this would be? My baby, Homer. Mom, Homer. I cannot get over how well you look. About a hundred years ago, I dated your mother. Beautifully. Tell the one about the movie you're going to do for TV. You know, the one with the little dog. What movie? Remember, you told us on the phone. Right, with the little dog. Tell them about the little dog. You got it. Oh, me. that. Well, it didn't work out, but... It's probably for the best, because I hear that dog's a bitch to work with. You know what you ought to do? You ought to star on Broadway again. Yeah. I'm not interested in Broadway. I'm, I'm thinking of going into real estate. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. Um, no, it's not. Look, I've got a slight headache. Why don't you people dive in? And afterwards, you can tell us what you think. I oh, will. Yeah. Be honored, Mr. The point, sir. Oh, boy. Well, it's probably the perfect role for me anyway. I'll play the audience. Okay, if I smoke? Place still a church? Um, not precisely. We use the old chapel for our performances. The whole island uses it for various activities, like the AA meeting. That's most of the island right there. It's no longer a church. Unless you feel as I do that the theater ought to be an incredible act of religious sacrifice and faith, and that any place where theater is created and nurtured is also somehow a place of worship. I was going to quit anyway. Putting a lot of things. We are missing one cast member. We can start without her. Dave, don't you have something to say? Welcome, Mr. Wood, to the second rehearsal of an original musical written by myself, S. Dave Schoenfeld. Yes, Mr. Sandman. Makes sense. To briefly summarize, it concerns an innocent young human being, played by Hope here, who when we first meet her is a humble street musician. And it further concerns a learned professor of musicology, played by yours truly who wagers that he can transform her into an opera singer, which he does with hilarious results. Tell him the name of the show. A Diva by December. Did you want to offer an opinion so far, Louis? Well, yeah. let's just hear it. Fine. Act one, scene one, New York City. At rise, the girl... Woman. The girl, woman Elaine, is seated center stage selling flowers. Flowers. She's ragged, yet radiant. I am not radiant. Fake it. <laughs> I've just been evicted, I'll sing it louder, reported from my living quarters, forced to take a powder, if I could find a place to sleep, that had a little Why? Chester 
I could take that wave And her guitar and make of her An operatic star My Fair Lady. Really? I hope, but I never dreamed. It's really up there with My Fair Lady? It's not up there with My Fair Lady. It is My Fair Lady. Just what? Lady. what the heck? Don't hate me. Don't hate me. Oh, God, I smell like pepperoni. Tom made me work overtime, and you should see what I made of tips. But he's so stupid, you know. Tom, he didn't see anything, what do you call, um, ironic about me serving pizza dressed like this. Is it okay? I wasn't sure. Oh, it's perfect. It's perfect. We thought a costume would make the song sound better. Hello. Uh, what song? Homer, from the musical he wrote. He wants you to hear it. I You're don't impossible. Know it. It's this musical about people who are suffocating in the ice age. What? Well, all these people keep making passes at each other and splitting up and getting back together again and feeling suffocated in the ice age. You know what I mean? Oddly enough, I do. Persuading this girl to trace in here, dressed for Halloween. Oh, I'd like to hear the song. Just they've gone through a lot of trouble and. I'd like to hear it. Well, let's hear it then. Okay. Julia, up here. A few of you may have heard parts of this before. I've heard it all before. It's a musical interpretation of Anton Chekhov's play, The Seagull. I call it Seagull. A musical should be heartwarming. How can it be heartwarming if it takes place during an ice age? You're missing the point. I'm using ice as a metaphor for loneliness. Then what are the penguins? Penguins? Singing penguins. Play the song. Okay, there's only one thing you need to know. Julia is portraying Nina, who wants to be an actress, so she travels to the moon. Well, just slightly above the moon, because she's weightless. And she's been up there a long time.
I can't make a head or tail of it. What do you know? My headache's gone. Um, can I see the script? Uh, I only have the first draft. We are very excited about Dave's Diva by December. The script is full of surprises, and the uh, posters are already printed. So, uh, shouldn't we continue with our rehearsal? All right, we should. Oh, uh, this is good. The, uh, the line about the purpose of existence is funny. Isn't it? That's my favorite part. Um, so where should we take it from, guys? Why aren't you guys rehearsing this play? It's a long story. See, we all read Dave's play, and then we read Homer's thing, and we voted. But this seems so wonderfully offbeat and original. Is the rest of the score anything like that song? Yes, I said this all along. What do you mean, do Homer's play? I've got 500 Diva posters sitting on my ottoman. Well, I just had such a vivid picture of what this could be. The peculiar atmosphere Chekhov creates. That, that song was absolutely rife with it. Is it? We captured something very close to Chekhov here. That, that sense of isolation. A character trapped by what she can never have. Nearly destroyed by disillusionment, yet determined to triumph. It's funny. I've read it, but I must have missed that part. Well, if we were working on it, it'd all be very clear, believe me. Sounds beautiful, the way you explained of it. Of course it's beautiful. You said we. But if we were working on it, that's what you said. Did I? Homer, don't put him on the spot here. Well, wouldn't that be something? I think the point is, we can still change our plan. This is only the second rehearsal. Why? Of course, we can never perform Homer's piece without a little help. But since you seem to understand it so well. Well, I wouldn't be that much. Um, excuse me. As a matter of fact, there's a partner that's perfect for you. Will you back off, Marjorie? He does not want to help us. We just picture an all my people. I think that egg has got better fish to fry. Honey, can I just get a word in? I'll say what thing. You sure know this stuff. B, how can you say we chose wrong? We voted. It's right here in the minute. Somewhere. He knows these things. He just knows. Picture it. Your show starring Lawrence Wood. Oh, God. They think that I'm somebody, they want what I've got. They think that I'm somebody, don't know that I'm not. The way that they're up to me is making me blush. I really should go, but hey, what's the rush? They think I give interviews at least twice a day. They think I can pick and choose the parts that I play. The fellow who breathes in here creating a stir. They think that he's me, if only he were. Mr. Wood, sorry to interrupt you while you're reading, but, uh, never mind. Go back to what you were doing, really. It's not important. It's just, it's nice to meet you. She thinks that I'm somebody, she's just out of touch. I should set her straight, except I like it so much. She thinks that I'm wonderful, like one of my dreams. The longer I'm here, the realer it seems. Back home there's a million things I ought to get done. But standing right here, right now, I can't think of one. And suddenly I recall the dreams I once had when I was his age. Cause this isn't bad. I feel like I'm somebody. Oh, what a miracle that is. And what I wouldn't give to live a life as glorious as he is. He's sharp tomorrow morning, first read through, okay? Okay. 
Are you serious about all this? Yeah, if it's all right with you. I know I said it only stayed a week, no, but... No, it'll be great. Someone to talk to around the house. Nothing against Stella. I just... I was having a nervous breakdown until about five minutes ago. <laughs> Seriously, I was going to top off my whole week by flinging myself into the bag. Oh, boy. I forgot Hill. He's cracking me up. I'm sure glad you're here. Thank you. God, thank you? How trite. Uh, words can't possibly express what I'm feeling right now. I like that song. Words can't possibly express it. I'm stunned. I'm stunned. Yet somehow not stunned. I mean, not that I ever dreamed of anything like this. I was just hoping for a little appreciation. You know, from a fellow artist. I mean, I can't tell you what it's like here. Well, you know, you grew up here. It's horrible of me to say, but this group is completely bourgeois. They're opposed to new forms of theater. So I've had absolutely zero encouragement. Oh, God, I can't believe I'm talking to somebody who actually understands. Well, I certainly understand about needing encouragement. But I shouldn't. I hate myself for needing encouragement. All that matters is the act of creation, the courage to do it. Never mind what other people think. I honestly don't care whether or not people even like my work. Honestly. Well, I liked it. Really? <laughs> wow. The musical version of The Seagull. What on earth made you choose that play? When I first read The Seagull, I was astounded. The characters fill one with a sort of pain. Their idiosyncrasies are so annoying, and that's what I think theater should be. A pain? Annoying. I think one ought to annoy the audience, make them squirm, shock them out of their complacency. But is it, isn't it relatively safe to shock people? The real risk is revealing yourself. Your, uh, your girlfriend, this pretty voice. She's not my girlfriend, exactly. It's more complex. So imagine, you're really going to star in my play. And direct it, if that's all right. Oh, that's more than I've hoped for in my wildest dream. Well, first of all, the scene's gotta be cut by tomorrow. It's just way too long. It is? Look at it. I want you to go home, and I want you to reread it very carefully, and take out anything that's not absolutely necessary. And be ruthless. I know it's hard. Oh, I can be ruthless. I better start reading, too. God, I must have been crazy to agree to this. You didn't agree to it. And you sort of suggested it. Well, you better get to work. Yeah. I said tonight I've got a future, but 
Okay, now try to concentrate. Imagining you takes all of my powers. It's all I can do. Four hours and hours. So, were you say anything about my singing? Do you think I was good? I was terrified. I was more terrified than when I used to shoplift. I guess he must have pretty much thought I was good or Shush! Just see if you can sing this. I feel like I can do anything. Do you feel like that? I mean, I know how scared you are to leave home and all, but... I am not scared to... Where do you get these things? Homer, you live with your mother, for God's sake. I pay rent. Sometimes. You have never truly understood my mother for one second, or how demented she can be. She's a bit odd. Demented? Yes, my mother is demented on the subject of being abandoned. Because of what my father did, nobody on this island understands that. I love you sometimes. You're so... Strange. I'm certainly not scared to leave home. Okay. You really don't know anything. Okay. Oh, now pay attention. You were wonderful last night. I was. Play the song. Here. It's a gold feather. How come? How come it's a gold feather? No. How come? Homer, I thought we talked about this. I made coffee. You always say it's the meat the woman to make the coffee. I'd mellowed. Where were we? Imagining you in love with me, I know it already, teach it to me. Hello, and goodbye. All right, happy, satisfied, hello, and goodbye. Dave, listen. That's right, what you are thinking is correct. I'm drunk. I never even went to bed. I sit up all night drinking, getting drunk. You don't smell drunk. Well, I am, and don't bother costing me your offer, because I'm leaving. Here, my formal letter arrested the nation from the player island harbor. Night me took night to type it because I was drunk. He's not drunk. These margins are perfect. Women. What about them? You know, how you just say that. To another man, of course, because naturally you just understand it. Being men, so you don't even have to explain Dave, it. listen. Last night, I never intended... I mean, I never meant to hurt you. You believe me, don't you, Dave? Maybe I should have asked her for a cup of coffee in terms of starting a conversation. Dave, don't quit. I, I want you to be in Seagull. Can I be that guy who, you know, gets through all the love scenes? Well, no. Mr. Wood's going to play that part. But I was hoping he'd play Simon. Well, how many love scenes does he have? No. Oh, that's okay. You can write him one. Yeah, there you go. Get the pencil. Look, the so thing is... To tell you the truth, my talents are being wasted in this group. I'm not like this. You think I'm like this? I should be playing love scenes. When I'm by myself, I'm another person. Write me a love scene. I'm sorry, Dave. I just can't. Then I quit. What part do you want me to play? Uh, Marsha. She's a waitress in the Hummingbird Cafe. She has a very good sense of humor. And a death wish. Very full body, by the way. Make an excellent cup of coffee. Oh, sexist. I ought to quit, but I can't. Good morning. I made a few cuts. When did you do this? Last night. Sleep. 
That's wild. I came out here to get a good night's sleep, and I couldn't sleep. Who needs sleep? Um, Dave, you're not mad at me, are you? Mad? Hey, this group is finally going to get some much-deserved attention. Which it justly deserves. Good, because there's a wonderful role in this for you, by the way. Oh, I never care which role. It's all just for fun. Hello, all. You're late. Stella, hand out the rehearsal schedule. Don't lose them. They don't grow on trees. I want everybody off book by this time next week. Saturday plus evening? What else is so fascinating around here to do? The volunteer fire department for over. Well, that's just male bonding. Come on, Andrew. It's just, I'm not an actor. I'm a goddamn mechanic. And the volunteer fireman, and I've got responsibilities, that's all. I've got an incredibly important question. Seagull. Act one, scene one. Place. Small cafe in the Western Hemisphere. Time. One evening during the second ice age. The stage is dark, virtually pitch black. This effect continues throughout the entire play. We'll change that. What? Um, let's just skip this penguin nonsense for now. Enter Marsha, a waitress, and Simon, a bartender and graduate student. <coughs> they remove their outer garments with nervous, bird-like gestures. Enter Constantine, our hero, who is encrusted Wait with... Wait a minute, what did you say? I mean, that's not what's written. Constantine isn't the hero. He's kind of a hero. But he's not... Look, live with it. Is everybody ready? Look at all this. I'll never be able to learn all this music. Of course you will. Two, three, four. Imagining you takes all my powers. It's all I can do for hours and hours. Inventing amusing phrases only you would say. We have conversations every day that way. Imagining you in new situations. We have different fun. What a perfect understanding we two have. True, he doesn't hear a word I say, but that is brilliant. I wonder how I'll ever thank him for what he's doing with my play. She heaves a sigh, removes her parachute, and kisses him. Uh, don't kiss him. Well, what? And don't move your parachute. Um, excuse me. Um, should I give a sigh? No. Help me. Um, Mr. Wood, I wrote that she's supposed to heave a sigh, remove her parachute, and kiss it. Live with it. Everyone stays late tonight. We're making ice burn. It's only a play, and I'll stumble through it. I'm only afraid that back there I blew it. He's only the best if he wants to do it his way. Okay, it's only a play. Now, let's see, where are we? Oh, yes, Nina is over here, and our hero is over here. No, he's not, Mr. Wood. I mean, I'm not the hero. There isn't a hero. There's always a hero, even when there isn't a hero. Oh, I never know what to do with my hands. I mean, on stage. Yeah, you some pockets. That's all wrong. Her character would never have pockets. That's great. Like, two pockets? As many as you want. Mr. Wood! Live with it. It's only a play. It's all so amusing. It's only my words. They're no longer using so many nights, and it can't be worth it. So many crimes in the world today. War and corruption, hunger and blight. Someone rewriting someone's play. Live with it, Homer. Yay! Homer, we don't need you right now. Homer, give me a check. Homer, this doesn't make any sense. It's cut. Yay! Yay! The more he cuts, the better it gets. Yay! I hate him. How dare he? Rewrite my play just for fun. And here is the worst part I sometimes like what he's done. And God only knows I only adore her. It's only a play, but I wrote it for her. So now I can see what trouble and strife is. Who knew it would be as hard as real life is? It's only a play.
I've got to talk to you. Oh, hi. Someone called last night. It was a woman. She was a woman. Did she leave a name? She said she was your agent. You don't have to tell me who she really is. My agent called? Okay, if that's how you want it to be. Well, I'm not calling her. She was pretty friendly, I mean, her voice. I'm not calling her back, ever. What does she look like? She looks like, uh, like a desk. Or, no, rather, she sits at a desk. She's really indescribable. Is she beautiful? I have nothing to say to that woman. Nothing. I got a phone call last night. Right, from some woman. What woman? Nobody. I'm um, my agent. Someone important called from New York City. Woo! Listen, everybody. Before we start rehearsal, I have a very important announcement. The penguins are back in. Oh, yeah! Thank you. You won't regret this. Yeah, well, uh, I, I finally understand what their function is. They're sort of a Greek chorus. No, they're not. It must be wonderful getting phone calls from famous people all the time. Don't be silly. The letters of Anton Chekhov. Read it. We're on page 23. Imagine just getting a phone call. I just mean how all these famous people probably call each other all the time. Look, I'm only famous here. Out there, I'm just... I look vaguely familiar, that's all. People think they knew me in college or something. But I didn't even go to college. But the point is, I want to get down to rehearsal. Nothing my agent could possibly say would mean more to me than this. Now, I'd like to start in the Hummingbird Cafe. Can I have the ladies seated in the cafe? Nina, you've just entered over by the ice floes. So, Nina, you see the bird of paradise. And you pick it up, gently. I have already entered. I'm standing by the ice floes fishing, and you lay the bird of paradise at my feet, gently. And exit. And exit. Ladies, you see this, and you find yourselves coming to your feet. Not necessarily. Let it be a kind of discovery. You see the bird of paradise. It's this beautiful piece of nature which has been destroyed brutally. And you find yourself slowly coming to your feet. All right? Try it again. Is it going to be like that? Would you please not interrupt? Um, ladies, that's fine. That'll be fine. 
Well, we can have even more reaction to the bird of paradise. And when you rise out of your seats, let the entire moment affect you more. Do you understand? No. What's the problem? I don't understand why he shoots a flower. He doesn't shoot a flower. Yes, yes he, he does. does. He shoots a bird, not a flower. A bird, a bird of paradise. It's right here. It's not, it's the name of a flower. How many thought it was a flower? But my question is, A, why does he shoot a flower? I wrote, listen to me, it is a bird, a bird of paradise. Look, I thought it was wild, the original Constantine shooting a flower. King shoots it to six. B, what's he doing on the North Pole? I was talking. He'll shoot flowers pretty much anywhere. I've inquired. Why are you changing birds into flowers? Hey, he knows his stuff. He sends flowers to people all the time. It's not the point. Who have you been sending flowers to, Lois? No one. It's not a flower. Look, I just thought it was such a marvelous image at that moment, Constantine shooting a flower that reminds him of a bird. It's like they were supposed to be birds, only somebody stopped in the middle. That's what they look like, like they're waiting for someone to finish them, the way their mouths are open like that, like they're hungry for more out of life. Or something. You are all crazy. All I want to know is, are we looking at a dead flower or dead bird when we go like that? It is not a flower! Break! We're all on a break. Whatever you'd like to eat now. Ladies in the cafe, wait here just a second. All right. I think we all know what's needed here. I mean, I know. And I know you know. You can pretend you don't know, but you know. Because it's all right there inside you, isn't it? Like, like a bird of paradise, like a flower trying to open the very treasure. I mean, we've all got secret reserves, secret sources of, of secrets, and you've got to open those up. You've got to open up. Because, look, I'm just not satisfied, and I know you're not. I know you're not. This isn't enough for you. You've got all these colors inside you, and you're hungry. You're hungry for more. Think it over. I said 
it's Palmer. We, we knew. knew. You knew? Everyone, Everyone knows. knows. Oh, no. Oh, oh yes. yes. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, hell, what a relief. Such a surprise to mine. And he's a Collect from wood. Hi. Um, take it out of my next check. Well, no, I could come in if it were something, but... You want me to audition again? Well, I'm not all that eager to... Yeah, I'll hold. Um, want part of my sandwich? Huh? Um, no. Um, part of a pickle? Yes! Yes. Listen. I've auditioned for that piece of crap three times now. After a while, it becomes... Yes, I'll hold. Okay, look, let me explain. You're probably right. It's probably a big mistake, and I'll have to live with it. See, I've gotten involved with something out here. Take your other call. Let's hear that goddamn song. What goddamn song? That thing from yesterday. Off book. Sunday is a volunteer fireman's potluck. Most of us are going. Well, I know I'm going. Well, I'm going with you, aren't I? We can work around the people who want to go to the potluck. I mean, we just can. Anyone who wants to... Shut up, Homer. You are not the director, and you don't know what the hell you're talking about. All of you, my God, haven't you got the tiniest shred of pride? I mean, forget about doing it for me. Don't you even care about each other? Louis! Want my handkerchief? Oh, shut up, you idiot. Oh, I can't take this anymore. What's the matter with you? Even my students don't insult me to my face. May I say something? They have the decency to wait till I turn around and write something on the board. I wish you had consulted me as far as Sunday goes. I was elected secretary of this group. That's because nobody else wanted to do it. Andy! I give up. That makes two of us. I never liked that song. That's because you never heard it. It goes by so goddamn fast. Why can't you just do what you want? You want to hear it your way? Is that what you want? Yes! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 
all of my power It's all I can do For hours and hours Inventing amusing phrases Only you would say We have conversations every day That way And it let me spend light years alone with you meeting your All right, bring him in.
Very, very dark. No sun. No fun. Penguin mustin. Men, women, crabs, seals, giant crabs, giant women, whales, dolphins, porpoises. Octopi, snout, sand snakes, brown mice, tortoises, starfishes, horny toads, all, all are becoming extinct. Every form of life, clams, slugs, cedar, all dying, dying due to the ice age and to federal cutbacks. But look, there is some hope. So there goes Nina, the would-be actress, flying once again to the moon to a work and perfect her craft. Look at her, soaring above the clouds. She has become a seagull. And where does that leave me? Every day is fish, fish and swimming and fear. Every day a shark comes by and grins from ear to ear. Here I am, a bird that never got off the ground. Here I sit, bird on ice. I clap my slippers, but no dice. Oh, when will penguins fly and find the joy we see? Oh, when will we transcend our squat disease? I know why feathers moan and why sardines must die. So tell me, please, why penguins should not fly. Everything's black and white, black, white, like very early TV, TV. We all look so much alike, I'm not sure this is me. Which one is he? We become a joke, a, joke. a souvenir for cliche. cliche. What kind of vicious creator uh, would make a bird look like a waiter? Uh, oh, when will penguins fly and float off in the blue? Disenchanted poet, poet, on the verge of self-destruction. But life goes on, and people continue to smoke, and commit adultery, and forget where they left their glasses, and nothing ever happens. We're watching in the dark, the laughing stock of birds. Penguins, thank you. That had much more conviction. I disowned this penguin at me. I'm going to write another one. Tomorrow night is dress rehearsal, Homer. There's no time to learn anything new by tomorrow. What's wrong with this ending? All the jokes he put in, they stick to me. You think anybody rewrote Anton Chekhov? You did. Too late to change the ending. It's never too late to change the ending. He's got a call about doing some kind of show in New York. He said he'd rather be with us, though. You're gonna walk me to work, right? Yeah, sure. Louis, I would like to try my phone again. You know, he goes for pizza every night now. He says it's corrupting her. Well, whatever he's doing, it's selling tickets. Mm -hmm. Louis, I would like to try to... There's no point in going over your song again today. Not until you commit. Not until pardon? Not until you make a commitment to your character. I don't believe you for one moment. Not to the entire play. Rather losing your place or asking the time or fixing your hair. Everyone else is struggling. They're reaching for truth. You're asking what page we're on. 
that's the sort of performance you want to give, I can't help you. I happen to have problem hair. Ready? Yeah, look, I'll see you all tomorrow. Louis, I really must insist that you permit me to try my song again. You haven't given me any help. I played that scene with you three times today, and not once did you look me in the eye. Is the uh, rehearsal over? See, look, there you go, hiding behind your pages. I'm not sure of the words. I don't care, do something genuine. You're an actress. You're trapped in this frozen wasteland. You're desperate. Tom wants me there by nine. You'll get there, okay? I can't be late, it's my job. So, is this it, in terms of rehearsal? Look, I'll explain to, uh, what's his face? Huh. I'll, Tom, I'll explain to Tom. Wait for me outside. Okay. The song, do it. Now, yeah. yes. me in the eyes and force me to stay because I'll leave. I will. My hand is on the door. You're mine. You are. In a way I can be mine. You're mine. To the near that prove you're mine.
I wouldn't change the ending if I were you, Homer. When I wrote this ending, I didn't understand why Chekhov ended the play so savagely. But I understand now. Is there anything good to eat at home? She doesn't even go shopping anymore. I go, I just don't pay much attention. Well, I am hungry. Well, I'm hungry too. I understand exactly how you feel about wanting to rewrite the end of your play. It's just like cooking. You think maybe if you throw in some rice roni, it would all come together. But it never does. He wants to escape. The kids plead for Twinkie. He dream of creating something different, a tuna surprise. And every day, the same question eats away at you. What's for dinner? It's me, isn't it? Huh? I'm screwing up the end. I mean, my voice just isn't blending. It's not you at all. I try to warm it up. I drink tea, but nothing helps. I'm sorry. I just can't change my voice. There's nothing wrong with your voice. It fits with the rest of you. Oh, God. No. No love scenes for anyone. Oh, okay. Um, all right. Sure. Uh, I understand. Okay. Uh, never mind. Oh. I never told you. I never told you what I was going to tell you. Tom changed the name. It's not Tom's Pizza anymore. Guess what it's called now? The Slice O Life. Not of life. O Life. Is that a real word? Anyway, we thought it was the most poetic name. We? Yeah, well, I was working the late shift, and Lawrence was kind of there. And, well, Tom doesn't even tell us. He just shows us the new napkin. And you know what he said? Not Tom, Lawrence. He said the name is poetic because of how it means two different things. I know what poetic means, thank you. I can show you. Mm, I have one of the napkins with me because he wrote all over it. Not calm, Lawrence. It's kind of falling apart because I keep reading it all the time. Can't help it. So anyway, now it's called The Slice of Life. And I just wanted to tell you. Don't you think it's poetic? I think that it is an empty, meaningless gesture. Somebody changes the name of some piece of place, but nothing ever really changes. I mean, life goes on as before. People hurt one another, they betray one another, they hardly ever call one another. I will see you tomorrow night at Jeff's rehearsal. I will continue to take direction from you for the good of the show, because I can behave like a professional, even if you cannot. Naturally, I will not allow this cheap affair of yours to affect my performance. Let's go. You're late for work. There are things I can't forget Like I want a puppy Mom won't let me have a pet I'd settle for a guppy. There are things I can't forget If I wrote on paper All the things I can't forget They'd run right off the page You wrote that when you were 13? Nine. 13. All the things I can't forget Even when I try to when I go to sleep, they're in the dreams I fly to. There's a father who is mine that I can't remember. Oh, my mom just said we'll get a cat, and now I'm fine. I always liked that song. I remember the day you wrote it. I sang it for a week. You haven't liked anything I've written since. I can't help the way I feel. I don't understand the things you write anymore. Of course, when you were little and you wrote things, you value my opinion. Do you want this? No. I'm going to burn it. The whole seagull. You mustn't say that. It's beautiful. It's problematic, but it's beautiful. But he's ruining my life. I know. But he's directing your play rather well, don't you think? It's true. He showed me things about my play that I didn't even know existed. 
And I hate him. I know. And I hate her. No, I don't. What in particular is beautiful about it? Homer, just give it enough time. If you loved me, you'd shoot him. After opening night, everything will be all right. After opening night, when the maids are leaving, they've been starting to feel that the parts they play are real. After opening night, they'll discover they're just good friends. If she thinks she's in love, it's your song she's thinking of. If she's under a spell, it's the one he has played the love. As for him, well, you see, he's confusing her with me. After opening night, look at all of this breaking down. They're in a hopeless situation. They're not in love, they're in a play. Well, it's a damn good imitation. After opening night, they'll see the light of day. You're just saying this because you're my mother. Well, make believe I'm not your mother. Talk to me as if I were simply a person. If you were my mother, we wouldn't even know each other. We might very well know each other. We could have been inexplicably drawn to each other. I do not think that we could have been inexplicably drawn to each other. I think we must have been stuck in an elevator or something. Never mind what brought us together. Mother, I'm sorry. And nothing personal intended. But I believe all this is your fault. What? Please don't deny it. Because if you do, I'll have to kill you. And that would not be mature. You know, honesty is overrated. Mother, you meant well, but you're a thoughtless and manipulative person who isn't normal. Well, it's a free country, but you can spare me the synthetic words of wisdom when it's your fault that he came here in the first place. You're always like this when you skip breakfast. You're so condescending. That's utterly silly. I try to write and you destroy my concentration. Just like your father. It's your fault that I'm the way I am. You made it clear. That if I ever left home, you'd fall apart. You made it clear that your life would simply end if mine should start. I, I didn't mean that. I just said it for effect. And make believe I didn't say it. After opening night, everything will be all right. After opening night, it will all fall into place. It will be like you planned. You'll reach out and take his hand. Every opening night always ends with a big embrace. You will know it by heart. You'll be perfect in the pond. After opening night, he will see that he's been wrong. And he'll know that you've won, that he needs a wife. And son, after opening night, we will celebrate all night long. Is this an accident of big year? Or was it meant to be this way? That you and I have got to wait. For our opening night, for a chance to get it right, after opening night, they'll see the light of
Alexei Sergevich, dividing people into successes and failures means looking upon human nature from a narrow, preconceived point of view. Are you a failure? Am I? supposed to wear makeup at dress rehearsal? Women wear everything. We just wear eyeliner. I still can't believe how Chekhov was a doctor. He wrote all those plays on the side. Like being a doctor wasn't enough for him. Like he says right here, I am as bored as a sturgeon. As bored as a sturgeon? I rewrote the new ending. It's deeper. I refuse to learn anything new at dress rehearsal. My God, it'll throw my character all out of whack. Lethargy, heightened excitability, and a feeling of guilt are purely Russian traits. Lethargy, heightened excitability, guilt. You look beautiful. I warmed up my voice. I finished writing my play. It's called The Seagull. It's nothing to ooh and ah about. Nothing to ooh and ah about. Oh my god! It flopped! The play flopped! It fell flat and flopped! The audience is bewildered! The moral of the story is I shouldn't write plays. Fell flat. Flop. Will be. I shouldn't write plays. Poor man. Chekhov's life was miserable. Chekhov had TV. Chekhov suffered for his art like me. Chekhov's parents put him down. Chekhov coughed up blood. Other Russians treated him like crud. Mr. Wood, 
We couldn't wait till opening night. Uh, can I speak with you alone? <laughs> it's important. Not now, Homer. I rewrote the new ending. Homer, open it. I'll open it. No, wait. It's, we tried to look for a seagull, but we couldn't find one, so we got you a penguin listen, instead. Listen, listen. We have a problem. If it's regarding hot glue... It's not. Don't tell me. The penguin feeds stink. Let him say what it is. It's... If it's no. about our little fat, Louis, I forgive you. I've been offered a job. A Broadway show. A kind of stupid show. But the problem is that they want me... I mean, I'd have to be in New York City tomorrow morning for dress rehearsal, which obviously creates a problem. What exactly are you saying? You're not sure what to do. I'm saying I better talk it over with all of you first. A Broadway show? Yeah, the timing is... It's a shame. You can't go. Well, unfortunately, I have to consider it. Why? Don't anybody raise their voices. We all need our voices. Why do you even have to consider it? We're talking about how I make my living here. You mean you're going to do some show that you just told us was stupid? That's kind of stupid. Let him answer. I'm saying it's a terrible thing, I know, but I have to make my decision. I think you're full of it. I think you've already made your decision. Uh, give him a little respect. At least he's being honest here. No, he isn't. He's probably already made his decision. You've already taken the job, haven't you? Haven't you? Have you? Yes. This was like nothing to you. I need a job. Well, that makes sense. That's all that's important, right? Look, there's no reason somebody can come in here tomorrow with a script in their hand and read my part. I think that's a decent solution. There must be someone here who could come in and fake his way through it. Who? Someone, anyone. Yeah, we know the song. No one will come. It's just us. We can't have somebody reading from the script. That would completely destroy the reality. I mean, you're the one who kept talking about making it real. I would be willing to play his part. Oh, give up! Why am I treated this way? I'm the only one thinking in a positive direction. You know, I think what you're doing is completely unprofessional. To walk away the night of the dress rehearsal. I'm actually, I'm considering a lawsuit. Homer. Get away from me. Oh, I hate your plan. I'm happy to be done with it. Please stay. I'm begging you. We are nothing without you. Don't say that. But you'll get all kinds of jobs, better jobs. Homer, it doesn't work that way. How does it work? I can't explain it. If you could just call those people on the phone. Uh, call them back right now and tell them if they could just wait a few weeks. Two weeks. I mean, just explain the situation. Listen, it's not possible. Why not? What am I supposed to tell them? Turn them down because I'm fooling around with a bunch of amateurs? Thank you for clarifying that. I was getting pretty sick of all this anyway. It's just basically a waste of time. I'll have to call everyone who bought a ticket. What will I tell them? Hey, I understand. You gotta do it. I mean, congratulations. It's just I was starting to get a real kick out of it. Come on, will you? You told me yourself you only did this to get out of your house. Thanks. So away! I'm sorry. We're amateurs, so what? All it means is someone who does something out of love. How come you never answered my letters? What? I did answer. You wrote back. You didn't answer. I would like to know one thing. I would like to know what I'm supposed to do tomorrow night. When everybody I've ever known my entire life is waiting to see my correction, is waiting to see you in my play. You'll think of something. What kind of person you are. Well, whatever kind of person I am, I'm glad I'm not like you. Because I couldn't live with myself. You're a little bit like me. That is completely false and patently untrue. Just because you're famous and important doesn't mean you know everything. Homer, I'm neither of those things. Now you want to go and do some show just so that everybody's going to love you? Well, leave. I'll be right there, but I'm not here. All right? All right? All right. All right. Homer, Homer, please try to understand. I love this. I do understand. You think I don't know what it's like to want to get out of here? I mean, you think I want to be stranded here the rest of my life with this group of frustrated nobodies? Homer, I'm a frustrated nobody. Don't be in such a goddamn hurry. You have no idea how precious this is what you've got here in this place with these people. This is as... Homer, this is as good as it gets, ever. Whatever you're dreaming about, the struggle you've got here is the sweetest part. You don't need me to do your play. I do need you. I, you're what made it good. Homer, it was already good. You're good. You're better than I was. I mean, I had this vision about your play. Which is absurd. I mean, I love your play, even though it still doesn't make any sense. But I kept dreaming that this big producer would drive out here and just 
just never works that way. Haven't you ever had that fantasy? No. Well, in mine, he's Leonard Bernstein. Nobody knows how he found out about it, but there he is after the final curtain with, you know, tears in his eyes. He says he wants to conduct a cast album because I should direct the play myself. Well, do it. Okay, where is she? I go home and she's not there. My kids are bouncing around like kamikaze. Oh, my God. She must have forgotten to call the sitter. This is a woman who now four weeks ago was thinking of organizing a hotline for sitters. She is not herself. That's since you're a weirdo play and I'm holding you responsible. She used to be a little annoying, maybe a little predictable. Okay, she used to be so goddamn organized that it made me sick. But she always, always had a sitter. Okay, what is going on here? You know what your brother said to me? He said I was like a flower or some kind of bulb. And that it was only a matter of time before I bloomed or got dug up. Like very treasure. What does that have to do with anything? So what happened to our sitter? Did you say one more word about the sitter? What the hell were you doing in there? Cleaning up? I didn't even mention the sitter. Did I mention the sitter? What the hell did you say to her? I have no idea. You have no idea what I've been through. For some reason, this thing was under the mud porch and I still can't get it to close right. You planned this? Planned it? I could have killed him for springing it on me in front of everyone. Don't you understand, Homer? Nobody plans anything. Things just happen. They just happen, right? Well. Oh, God, it's so strange. You write all those songs about love, but you don't know anything about it. You can't come with me. What? Look, why did you think... I'm sorry. We must have gotten our signals crossed here. But you can't come with me. I said I wanted to. <laughs> well, I think all my stuff is more or less... I think I've got pretty much everything. Not that I brought all that much in the first place, but as usual, I feel like I'm forgetting something. You thought I was somebody, somebody I'll mess right here is a new ending. Here's the scripts and here's the music. It's all yours. I don't want it anymore. You're a coward, just like him. I'm leaving tonight and I'm never coming back. Marry me. What? I said, will you marry me? But you don't believe in marriage. So what you do? I don't think a person should do something they don't want to do. For instance, I'm Jewish. I don't actually practice anymore. I mean, there really isn't anybody around here to practice with, but I don't deny that I'm Jewish. You know what a rabbi would do if he wanted to, if he wanted to convert to the Jewish faith? He'd try to talk you out of it, like a test, see? So I'm going to try to talk you out of marrying me, okay? Ready? You're right. It was a terrible idea. It's not because I'm Jewish, is it? Of course not. Thanks for talking me out of it. Do you know what would be fun? If we all gathered around the piano in our costumes to make it more festive and we sang all the songs. What do you call that when you can't do the actions or the dialogue so you just sing all the songs? Boring. You call it boring. Don't you understand? It's over. What happened? My beauty broke. It is horrible to stuff a beautiful bird like that. I told you we should have gotten the lighter. That is be flat, not be natural. Well, show us. No, I'm leaving. And I'm not going to go. Oh, we're leaving with you. Here you are. Right here. I'm pregnant. What? What did you say? I'm pregnant. You're a kid. Let me see. Oh, that's, that's great. That's actually great. Congratulations. Thank you. 
about being here in this room with all of you people it makes me almost happy. Glad. Okay. 
there is an unexpected hush. Nina lands on the moon. The ladies come out of the Hummingbird Cafe to the edge of the ice world. Slowly. We look at each other. We look at our hero. We wave to survive. Everybody ready?